the incidence of lung cancer in both um, the United States as well as North Carolina is increasing, and we're actually starting to see more of an increase in women and also in non-smokers than we have in the past. Some of the questions that come up in terms of symptoms of lung cancer are interesting. The reason why is because in the majority of folks that we see, they may not be symptomatic. With that, so how do they find that out that they have a lung cancer when they go in for some other problem? Maybe they have had a car accident, or maybe they're getting another operation for something different, and a chest X-ray is obtained. At that point, you're actually able to see a mass or a nodule, and from there the workup begins. Some of the more common symptoms that people have, first being the fact that not, uh, the majority of our patients are asymptomatic, the second being that people start to have a significant cough start to cough quite a bit more than what they are used to coughing. Some other things that they may cough up besides just clear sputum could also be blood. Um, that's also another sign that we have to be mindful of about a malignancy or, or, or something that's going on in the chest that needs further intervention. Something else that people may have is weight loss. Feeling fatigued or tired, not being able to complete the usual activities that they're able to, 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 to generally complete. And then the last thing is if they're having any chest pain. You know, that's something else. Chest pain, not necessarily related to a heart attack, like pressure sensation, but more of a sharp pain, maybe on the side, or maybe they notice that they have like a droopy lip, or something that may signify that there's something else going on besides a cold or a cough or a pneumonia. In addition to pneumonias, some people actually, some people present with repetitive pneumonias in the same spot. So someone say, you know, I've always had a pneumonia that's been occurring in this upper portion of my lung. The doctor says that this is now my third or fourth bout. Why is that and why does that exist? So that's another symptom that people may have associated with lung cancer. We have various clinical trials that are occurring here at UNC hospitals. One of those trials includes a um, peripheral lung lesions, those lesions that are out in the edge, edges of your lung, um, those lesions that are less than two centimeters in size. We are trying to determine whether or not a lesser resection, such as a segmentectomy or just taking out a small sliver of lung, or a wedge resection, taking out the lung, the, the lung cancer itself with a good margin does better than what was the standard therapy or what is currently the standard therapy, which is a lobectomy. Taking out the entire lobe of your lung with the artery and vein and bronch is associated with it. We're trying to see if those patients who have a lesser resection do as well as those people who do not have or who have a the standard lobectomy. The other trials that we have going on is something called the MAGRI trial or a cancer vaccine, vaccine trial. Those people who have already been resected um, we then send their tumors off to a um, geneticist and we determine what markers they have. If they have the appropriate markers for the vaccine, we will then give them a vaccine to see if that decreases the incidence of recurrence for these lung cancers. Those are the surgical trials that we have going on. We also have chemotherapeutic trials that we have, such as the non-smoker trial, elderly trial, um, for those people who fall into those two, two categories. We have new trends that are occurring for lung cancer. Um, one of them is our superdimensional bronchoscopy. It's like a navigational kind of bronchoscopy that we have for lesions that are less than a centimeter in size in which we need to get a diagnosis. The uh, past trend was just to watch and wait to see exactly what would happen um, with people on, you know, inches or, you know, trying to figure out exactly what they have in their body. And so instead we are actually doing biopsies or a bronchoscopy that is navigational approach. So with a computer, with a bronchoscope, you can go in through the airways and actually get at the lesion itself, especially for those lesions that are less than a centimeter in size that is not easily resectable to kind of make a determination as to whether or not they do have a lung cancer or not. The other thing that we're doing here is something called minimally invasive surgery or VAT surgery, video assisted thoracoscopic surgery. This is a increasing trend both here in North Carolina as well as nationally. What that means is that instead of having the larger 10, 15 centimeter incision on the side of your chest, we usually make two or three small one centimeter incisions. And through the same, through those three holes, we're able to take out either the upper lobe, the middle lobe, or sometimes the entire lung itself through these small incisions. That has decreased tremendously the, um, the risk of 
post-operative or perioperative death or difficulties that has allowed patients to get back to their work without any, um, with minimal problems that has decreased the amount of pain that people have after their operation. And I think it's just good overall when people know that after their lung cancer operation that they've gotten completely cured. In addition to that, it's not a debilitating incision that they have that's very small. The other great trend that we have here at UNC is CyberKnife. So for those people who may not be able to tolerate an operation, whether that, that's medical versus um, other other issues that they may have, there's something called CyberKnife. And what that involves is a robotic arm that delivers high doses of radiation to just one small area or one small field associated maybe with their lung cancer or even with the brain cancer. And so through various slices and the use of the robotic arm, we're able to actually eradicate that, that, that lesion or that lung cancer. In addition to that, there's something called RFA, or radio frequency ablation. What that entails is sticking in a small catheter into the spot of the lung cancer where that's at, and instead of the patient having to go and undergo an operation, for those people who are not able to tolerate an operation, we're able to give a high dose frequency of radiotherapy again to that lesion in order to ablate that. And that's another one of the national trials that we have here going on at UNC is radio frequency ablation versus operation for those people who are not able or who are, who are high risk for surgery. So the question that gets posed to us in the community is what people can do to decrease their chances of lung cancer. Uh, the most important thing is to quit smoking. Um, the other important thing involves environmental, you know, where they work at and what other protective measures can they use in order to decrease the amount of environmental hazards that they get exposed to. So for example, for people who work in, you know, mills or or something where there's a lot of dust, such as painting or something of like that, using the appropriate respirator, respirators or ventilators in order to, to work or to function is very important. Um, those are the main things that you can do in order to, to, to decrease your incidence of lung cancer. The other thing, not to decrease it, but just to make sure that you're not at an increased risk or that um, you are doing okay. One of the screening studies that you can get is a chest x-ray. So see your physician once you get over the age of 40 or 50 and you have been a smoker. Make sure you do see your physician so that you can get at least an x-ray and kind of follow things up in that manner. Why is there such a stigma about lung cancer? Why is it a, a challenging cancer that people have to undergo. The reason why is because the majority of people are asymptomatic and once they do become asymptomatic, the concern is whether or not they are curative. The other thought is that once you know you get lung cancer, it spreads like wildfire. That's what we hear out in the community. Well, what the reality is is that you may not have been diagnosed or you may not have known that you've had this lung cancer until very late when you start to have severe symptoms. And so that's why there's such a huge concern about lung cancer. And so what we advocate is early detection. Early detection, early evaluation of your chest, and early symptom evaluation just to see exactly where things stand and what we can do sooner for you in order to decrease your chance of metastasis or spread of your lung cancer.